Hello there, welcome to College Algebra section 3.3. Unfortunately, this is one of the hardest sections in the class. And so my name is Gregory Carlson, and I'm going to show you how to find the zeros of any functions. And the reason this is one of the hardest sections in the class is because after, to, after this section, you're going to be able to solve any polynomial, any at all, you're going to be able to solve. So that's what the that's kind of exciting. Even something that has a hundred terms and a hundred potential answers, you're going to know how to solve it. So a polynomial has a factor x minus k if and only if f of k is equal to zero. So what we're going to be doing is finding the roots, and that means we're going to be using synthetic division to keep playing around until we get a remainder of zero. So for example, consider this, f of x is equal to x squared plus 9x plus 14. You probably know how to factor that, which is great, but I'm going to show you how to use synthetic division to solve this, just for practice, because this one's a little bit easier. So here's how you do this. We want to know what are the possible roots of this. What are the numbers that we can plug in for x so that all of this is equal to 0? That's the goal. And the only possibilities are factors of 14. Okay, I'll explain why that is in a minute. But the only possibility are factors of 14. So the only answers possible are positive negative 1, positive negative 2, positive negative 7, and positive or negative 14. Those are the only possibilities. And um, so basically what you need to do is just use trial and error to try to find one that's going to work. And so because I know what the answer is, I'm going to bump us ahead a little bit. Let's try negative 2 using synthetic division with negative 2. So we write in our coefficients, 1, 9, and 14. And here we go. Bring down the 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Add those together to get 7. Negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. 14 minus 14 is 0. And in fact, I'm going to draw a little smiley face in here because that's great news that we found our first uh, factor. So negative 2 is a solution. Negative 2 is a root of this. If you plug in negative 2, you're going to get 0. But more importantly, notice how we've reduced the polynomial a little bit now. Now that we've reduced this, this one will tell us what other answers there are. So you can translate this into 1x plus 7 equals 0. So 1x plus 7 equals 0, minus 7 minus 7, and you get x is equal to negative 7. And so just like that, we used synthetic division to find the first root and the second root. So the way this is going to work is we're going to start with a higher level polynomial, and once we reduce it to a square, we're going to be able to factor it, hopefully, to find the other two answers, or use the quadratic formula to find the other two answers. So if you factored this, it would factor to f of x is equal to x um, plus 2x plus 7. That's what it would factor as. And notice that our two solutions would be negative 2 and negative 7 because of the zero factor property. And uh, those are our two answers. Now, do you notice how when you multiply 2 times 7, you get 14? That's why only factors of 14 have the possibility of being answers. Because these numbers, once it's factored, have to multiply to make this number. As a result, only factors of 14 have the potential of being answers. So let's look at the next one. Is x plus 2 a factor of this polynomial? Basically what that means is if we plug in 2 into this, will the answer be 0? And we already practiced this in the last section, so let's do synthetic division. We flip the sign to negative 2, because that's the potential root. And so our coefficients are 1, negative 10, 8, and 64. So let's play our game, bring down the 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Add those together to get negative 12. Negative 2 times negative 12 is 24. Add those together to get 32. Negative 32 times negative 2 is negative 64. And look at that. 
we get a 0 as a remainder. So that means x plus 2 is a factor. In fact, we could rewrite this polynomial, so the answer is yes, and we could rewrite this polynomial as x plus 2 times this one. So that's constant x, x squared. So 1x squared minus 12x plus 32. Now, what you then would do is if you were trying to find the other solutions is you would do, you would either factor this or you would do synthetic division on this to try to find all of the answers. Okay, so here we go. This is going to be our first real big problem. Do you see how it says x to the 4? The degree of this equation is 4. That means that we are going to have four solutions. That's what the fundamental theorem of algebra states. It states that counting multiplicities, we're going to have four solutions. So unfortunately, this problem is going to be really hard because the number 160 right here has a lot of factors. And so we're going to have to be doing synthetic division a whole bunch until we find one that works. But luckily, they tell us that negative 4 is a solution. In fact, they tell us that negative 4 is a solution twice. So what we're going to do is synthetic division. So here's our first one. They tell us negative 4 is a solution. Here are our coefficients. And now let's do it. We know we've done this right. Since they told us this is a solution, we know we've done this right if we get a 0 over here. So this is a 1. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Add these together and you get 1. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Add those together, you get negative 22. Negative 4 times negative 22 is positive 88. And so add those together, you get negative 40. Negative 4 times negative 40 is positive 160. And we get a 0. So we've reduced the polynomial now. Now the polynomial is constant x x squared. Now the polynomial is x to the 3 plus x squared minus 22x minus 40. But that's just some extra information. You don't need to know that. Let's, they tell us that it's multiplicity of 2 for this answer. So let's do that process again. And using these coefficients this time of the simplified one. Okay. So 1. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Add this down. Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. Add these down, you get negative 10. Negative 4 times negative 10 is positive 40. Big fat smiley face. So there's our negative 4 with multiplicity 2. It's the solution twice. Our remaining polynomial now is x squared minus 3x minus 10. So now that we've made it into a quadratic, it's going to be a lot easier to find the last two solutions. In fact, this will factor two numbers that make negative 10 to add up to negative 3 would be x minus 5, x plus 2. Okie dokie, so that means our other solutions are 5 and negative 2. And look at that. We have four answers, one, two, three, four. The degree was four, and so we know we're done. The fundamental theorem of algebra tells us we're done. So let me show you the four numbers that you can plug into this thing to get the whole thing to equal zero are going to be negative four with multiplicity two. So the zeros are negative four with a multiplicity of two. So that's the first one. The second one is 5, and the third one is negative 2. So there's our four zeros, our four answers. By the way, knowing these, I can also completely factor this. So if I factored it, it would be the following. x minus 5 times x plus 2 times x plus 4 times x plus 4. That's equal to f of x. So if you were to foil this entire thing, first you'd have to foil these two, then you'd have to do a super foil with x plus 4, and then an even bigger super foil with the other x plus 4. If we did all of that, 
you would get this polynomial up here. And I'm going to let you do that just to check your answer, but that's really exciting. So it all connects together. This polynomial factors completely into this. And notice that we have two x plus fours. That relates to the multiplicity two. If you wanted to, you could also write it like this. x minus five times x plus two times x plus four squared, since we have two of them. Let me show you one last thing before we move on. If I were to graph this equation, um, I can kind of know what the graph would look like. And the graph would kind of look like this. I think the graph kind of looks like that. How do you know? Because here's how it works. These are zeros. 5, negative 2, and negative 4. They're zeros, and so that's where the graph is going to hit the x-axis. It's going to hit the x-axis at negative 4, at negative 2, and at 5. Since it's positive x to the 4, the graph is going to open up like this, and it's kind of like a parabola because it's x to the 4. If it's an even multiplicity, then that means we bounce off the x-axis. So we bounce off there, we go through it if it's an odd multiplicity, and we go through it there. So that's kind of what the graph is going to look like. And uh, at the start of part two, I will pull up a calculator, a graphing calculator, to see how close my drawing is compared to the drawing they get. In fact, I think my drawing is going to be a little off because here's the y-intercept. So it's going to cross way down here at negative 160. So I can tell it's going to be a little off. It's going to cross way down there. So when we get back, we'll see how close my graph is compared to the actual graph in a calculator. Okie dokie, so I will see you in part two.